and gentlemen, I am proudly here to present to you the Logic User Guide and Tutorial. My name is Eddie Gray. I'm super happy to have this opportunity, and that's what I see it as, a wonderful opportunity to grow together and to learn together. You ready? Here we go. This transmission finds you well. We get another shot. We get another chance to do this. The series has been doing so well. It's exactly what we wanted. We just wanted to give the very best content in the world in regards to Logic Pro. Uh, we're so happy that we get to be the ones to have this connection with you. My name is Eddie Gray. This is Resources for the Modern Creative brought to you by HFMusicAcademy.com. Guys, we have been talking about arranging, and uh, this is better put, uh, moving regions, duplicating regions. How do we navigate the workspace and get a handle on regions and um, um, navigation? How can we better exercise uh, our mind and our workflow when we are working, right? And so this is going to be a, a fantastic chapter we're in chapter eight page 330 something or other and it's great i'm not looking at the scoreboard but i i'm just enjoying my time with you i realize that one day we will get to the end of this and when we do we will be better for it you know we're going places so let's get right into it i'm gonna go ahead and just jump right in and we will go from there if we have any questions as always you can hit me in the chat and you can also just email us at support at hfmusicacademy.com. We are here to serve what we like to call the modern creative. There, there is a new kind of creative out in the world, and, and you have new challenges, and you have new opportunities, and we're here to help you navigate the landscape. So you guys should be looking at the user guide at the moment. And last we left off, we were cutting regions in half and doing all sorts of great stuff. Um, I really like this length feature that we found under the edit menu. And so I wanna make sure that I highlight that for those of you that are just tuning in. All right then, well, we're gonna go into moving regions in the Logic Pro tracks area. You can move regions to a different point in the same track or move them to another track of the same type, okay. Okay, you can move an audio region to another audio track, for example, but not to a software instrument track or vice versa. You can also move regions between open tracks area windows or between different open projects. Check that out. So if we have two different screen sets or, or just two different windows open, we can actually just drag from region to region. Conversely, also, if you have another open project just a different project altogether you can't just drag in so that's interesting i didn't know that i know you could just uh drag between windows i had no clue you could drag between projects here we go when you move a region it snaps to the nearest position so by snap they're referring to the snap to grid mode which is the heartbeat of my teaching when i sold my curriculum to learn quest who's an apple training provider the entire curriculum revolved around this concept of snap to grid and key focus along with nudge of course which is actually what we're getting into today when you move a region it snaps to the nearest position on the tracks area grid using the current snap value so this is why it's very important to have this as your backbone, as your default. I constantly want you to change it throughout the course of your session. Now, for those of you that uh, that get hip right away and, 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 and just get wise with it, 
you you want to make sure you set up key commands to expedite this process make it really fluid if you don't know what i'm talking about go back to the previous videos we go through everything you can override the grid by holding down control we also talked about this keyboard modifier if my snap to grid is set to bar and then i want to change it we can do so by applying the appropriate keyboard modifier if you do that it's going to bring the value down to the division or if you hold both control and shift look what happens it brings you down to a value of single ticks or samples depending on the the the, the zoom setting and i've tested these um accusations out uh but you know, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't this whole zoom setting thing i don't know if that is correlated with the smart snap mode but anyhow let's continue you can nudge regions Move them in small increments. So nudging means using the keyboard uh, key command or uh, using the toolbar icon. So we're not using the actual mouse or trackpad. Uh, so we can move in small increments per the snap to grid, left or right using key commands. To nudge regions, you first set the nudge value in the toolbar control option command. T is the key command. Then move selected regions by this value. Alternatively, you can nudge regions by a set value. Hmm, let me think about this. Then move the selected regions by this value. You can nudge regions by a set value. I don't understand the difference between those two. You can nudge regions by a set. Oh, maybe you would set the whole time and you don't change it not understanding let's keep moving though you can slip regions oh i love this feature if we do this you guys are so lucky i'm gonna go ahead and highlight this such a great uh new feature from what i believe 10.6 which moves the content of the region left or right by the nudge value so this has nothing to do with the position it has to do with the playback the content inside you're gonna be excited trust me it's it's a uh, great stuff without moving the boundaries right so it stays in place um, but we can actually move that content. And if we don't go over it, let me just make sure. I want to look around really quick. Yeah, we do. Okay, this is fantastic. You guys are you're in for a treat. Which moves the content of the region left to right by the nudge value without moving the boundaries. As we stated, the content effectively moves inside the region. It's almost like, like a window, like you're looking at a window and the material is moving inside. I'll show you. Slipping a region is possible only when the source content exceeds the length of the region um you slip or greater okay got it so if there's no more content to slip it's not going to happen then you get into this other concept if there isn't enough con um, content or material inside of that region it's called rotate and again i'll be showing you know real life examples we're just kind of getting our brains primed up you got to learn the language y'all you can also rotate regions similar to slipping rotation or rotating moves the region content left to right by the nudge value but with the difference that the content extends past the region border or one side reappears on the other side as though the region were a loop okay we have to look at it to really get it so let's just finish off this and then we'll go through all these examples shall we when an audio region is rotated, it's converted to a one track folder containing two regions. If it is rotated multiple times, the number of regions in the one track folder stays the same, but the junction point between those two moves to the folder. This is a very cool, creative tool. You're going to love it. You can use slip and rotate to move the content of audio or MIDI. Just make sure you get that part. When you slip or rotate a drummer, it is first converted to a MIDI region, then the content of the MIDI region is slipped. Because we know the drummer region or the drummer performer is in fact MIDI, right? All right, let's keep rock and rolling here. Um, well, actually wait, tip, I do like these. You can also move and resize regions numerically. You can also move and, okay, well, so they just, the event, they just threw this out there i mean it's like it's, it's, i think it's a little bit more substantial than that there's uh the event float window which is right here so um you can make changes to this if you wanted to you see how i'm moving stuff without having to touch the regions per se and this workflow is really fascinating because i could use my arrow keys to kind of dynamically move between the session 
Um, so like, for example, if I want to move track number 24, or let me do something with several regions, 34, and then now I'm selecting each region. Uh, if I wanted to change the overall bar, be, let me uh, turn on this program. You guys see right here, I can change the value with the event float window. Would you want to do this? I don't know. Uh, I'm just showing it to you because you may. And if you do, then I want to make sure that, you know, to be the one that gives you the information. Um, so what does all this stuff do here on the right hand side? Well, let's find out. Uh, we know that this moves the region around. This gives you the name. And then there's something to do with this, that, that, and that. So let's play with this. If I change the length, I don't see anything change except for here on the right-hand side. We can see that now it has. So this has to do with the length here on the right-hand side. Why don't I go ahead and just drag that up? So now I'm at four bars, five bars. This 34, that I have no idea what that does, but hopefully we get some more information. So that's the event float window. You can find that in window, hide or show event float. It seems like a really cool idea just to have rather than doing all this manually. I honestly just never got into it. And so it's just not part of my my flow. But I'm really liking this event float. So you know what that means. When I like something, I'm going to go ahead and highlight. That's the move. Um, no, not that. I want that. Sweet. All right, team. Eddie Gray reading the user guide and tutorial brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. We're, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty. I mean, sometimes, I, it's funny, I noticed the, the session from yesterday, it took us like an hour and 20 minutes just to go over like a page or two. So if that doesn't show you the value that's brought here, I don't know what does. Uh, you know, it's, it's important to recognize that this is going to take some time if you really want to be next level. And that's all I want for you. I don't, you know, don't dip your toes in the water. Let's go all in. Let's... Uh, Let's get it, right? If you're gonna do something, let's do it all the way, okay? All right, so look, we know how to move regions. We've gone over this from time to time. We know we can drag them using the mouse or trackpad, right? Uh, in the tracks area to move it to a new, okay, that's, that's basic. That's kind of within the track itself. You can also bring it over to another track. And while that may seem obvious for a lot of you, I'm telling you there are some people that just don't know these things. I'll never forget when I first discovered the um, the difference between the left channel strip and the right channel strip inspector and the relationship and how the right channel strip was was contextual and the left one was it absolutely floored me and I, I I wished that somebody could have done something like this and just stopped me in my tracks and you know made some corrections so that the trajectory of my career would forever be altered and maybe I would have got there sooner. Uh, but hey, we're all doing what we got to do. And as long as you get your repetitions in, you will get yours. So um, if I drag this MIDI track over to an audio track, nothing's going to happen. You get no playback, my good friends, because this is not an audio track. Uh, of course, if I drag another MIDI track over to, you know, this MIDI track, then you will hear playback. So I just want to be clear about that. If I bring this audio track to this audio track of course we're going to hear playback as well what else we got logic user guide drag a midi region up or down to another software instrument track so again uh, this is all the stuff that we stated in logic pro select the region then use the move region event to play head position Ooh, i love this guys pick up clock let's go if more than one region is selected all subsequent regions are moved for audio regions, the region anchor is placed at the current playhead. Check this out. Okay, playhead, please go to bar 50. Region, this one right here that I've currently selected, it's in key focus. Go to bar 50, hit semicolon right next to the L key, like long, and then boom. Check that out. Just moved over. I'm going to hit command Z so we see an instant replay. I wish I had a button that I could just do like a slow-mo replay, but anyway, semicolon, boom. Right, you see that? See how it moves back and forth? You gotta love it. So you wanna make sure you remember that when you're in the thick of it, when you're in the weeds, so that you're being effective. Let's say you're trying to line something up and it's just taking forever. All you gotta do is hit semicolon. I've got a lot of tricks for you. Um, let's keep moving though. Um, so it says if more than one region is selected, all the regions are moved. So I guess let me just show an example of that. If I drag these three, here we go. Boom, all three 
are moved over uh, in their current order, of course. Move an audio region back to its recorded position. Ooh, okay. What do we got here? This command only works for time-stamped audio files, such as those recorded in the current project and imported broadcast wave. This is important why we use wave files. Timestamp files are indicated by a clock symbol in the project audio browser. Hold on. Let's see which audio did we record here. Uh, this is this is an older session. I don't remember what's what. Most of this is MIDI though. I don't think any of this is audio. Mm, yeah, I don't think any of it is. Let me just hit. Yeah. Oh wait, this one apparently was. Now this is a loop. But it has the anchor position, which is good. Uh, and what did it say? Indicated by a clock symbol. So it looks like these strings I recorded, but these aren't live. This is all MIDI. Uh, but there's that clock symbol, which gives tells you that this is time stamped, right? Um, and then there's an anchor, which kind of brings it back to its original position. Um, okay, so that is good. Well, what else you got for me? Move regions to the selected track. Ooh, I like this one too. Move to selected track. The regions are moved to the selected track, keeping their existing time positions. Why is this helpful? You have 48,000 tracks, and you want to bring this one down to 250, but it's just going to take you a very long time. Well, you no longer have to deal with that, my good comrade, because let's pretend that this track right here is track 250 in fact why don't we just title it 250 and uh, again it's a long way home to 250 and maybe you kind of get lost in the process so then what we're going to do is we're going to select this track Ooh, but bad news because this region is no longer selected when i select this track it deselects the region that i want to move so then now i'm kind of working against myself let me show you a trick this is why we were here, right? This is why we're not just going over the user guide and reading it. And this is why we are in unknown territory. These things are going to happen, and we just have to kind of keep moving forward. So if we go into the preferences, command comma brings you there. We go into devices. We go into general editing, rather, <laughs> general editing. Then you basically want to deselect these two items. This is my workflow. Uh, there may be some other workarounds, but it's pretty simple after this. If I click this region and I click this track, look at what happens now, guys. I can individually select that track, and I can individually select that track, and I can individually select that region, rather. And now I've got this relationship happening. And so as soon as I control-click, move, and find move the to focus track and that would be control shift t so why don't we just go ahead and rock that right now control shift t look at what happens looky here looky here boom brought it down to its position with the original uh, uh position that it was recorded in so that's really efficient right because i don't have to think about all the back and forth now we can look at this a little bit later um, as well, but I just turn them both on and off when I when I'm just not interested in overanalyzing. And as you can see, we have a lot more to do here, so let's keep moving. So we can nudge regions by the nudge value. Now, by this point, we understand that there is a control bar which handles navigation, transport, uh, modes, functions, windows, things like that. And if I hit Control Option Command T, or conversely, hit that little icon right there, at the top left. What ends up happening, my good friends, is that we open up a wide selection of Logic's most often used key commands. And so this is obviously a great advantage because now I don't have to remember everything top of mind. I can just, you know, select whatever it is I want to customize by control clicking on the toolbar, hitting customize toolbar, and then boom, we're rocking and rolling. For now, I'm just going to set an arbitrary nudge value. I only stay between bar, beat, division, 10, and tick. That's it. I don't use anything else. I understand that some of you may want to use this stuff. I applaud you. Uh, you guys know that I'm your, your, I champion you, but I want to make sure that you understand that we're all going to have our own flows. And that's the reason that we're here, because we're going to identify what those flows are. And then 
execute, execute, execute. All right, so then again, uh, let's set this to beat so we can look at this. So if I click on this green region, the one that says Glock, now if I hit Option, right arrow key, look at this. It's now moving. Why don't I get a closer view? Z will bring me there. All right, look, Nudge Valley. This is moving by D, oh, I'm sorry, by beat rather, right? There's bar 33, beat 1, bar 33, beat 2, beat 3, beat 4, back to a new bar, right? This this whole cycle continues. All right, sweet. Let's uh, go back uh, by hitting, what? I'm already stuck in this view. Actually, this is a good time. If you ever get stuck like this, if you just slightly, you know, go up or down, click the background of the workspace. So you have deselected the region, hit Z, and then you're right back to normal. All right, so now you understand how to nudge something. Again, I highly recommend that you set the nudge value to a key command, my good friends. Very important. Uh, let's go here. All right, where are we at? Oh, we're slipping. All right, here we go. So there is a way to do this. We're going to make sure this is in key focus. We go to edit, move, slip left, and there's a corresponding key command, control option left, and then the other way. So let's, uh, let's choose something in here that could really work for us. Let me, let me listen to the parts and I'll make a kind of loud in my ears i'm gonna bring this down a little again don't you don't bring the master down i'm just doing this for playback um let's see i think i'll use maybe this bass or these yeah let's do these pizzicato strings <laughs> shout out to ddp for the collaboration on this one um okay so let me go ahead and create a perfect, yeah. I'm going to hit Command J to let's see, bounce that. It included the space. I'm not sure if you noticed what I did there. I created a marquee selection, Command J. Why did I do that? Well, I can look at the screen like this, but you'll better understand my example if this is bounced to audio um, the full way through the entire eight bars. Uh, I'm going to color, color this a bright color just so we can really look at the waveforms. And again, I will use the waveform display button here at the very top. And that will give us a little bit more visual information. Not auditory, but just visual. All right. So per, as stated, uh, option command T, option control T. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, not seeing much. We should see more because we our value is is bar. So I want to see what is going on here. Um, for fun, let me go ahead and turn this on and see if this makes a difference. I don't know if it will, but still gotta check. Um, still don't see a difference. I will try one more thing. Um, let me let me uh, pack a folder. Let's see if this makes a difference. Okay. So logic, you know what time it is. You didn't give us the right information. You get dinged. Not that one. Not that one. All right. Every time logic does that, and actually I don't want to highlight it. We want to strike it through. Again, one of the things I'll do is I'll send all these notes to Apple and hopefully we get a nice updated one. And then uh, on the next round, we uh, we can enjoy that this this whole thing one more time. But um, cool. So now um, the the protocol goes like this: you have to select the region itself. You have to Control click, go to Folder or Pack Folder. I have mine set up to Control Option Command P. I use it a lot to be honest. And then from there, you start to create this slip key command, which I have set up as uh, control option, right arrow key. Okay, so look at what's happening. I'm going to change my nudge value. I'm doing this with my key commands. So notice I have a setup to my numerical keyboard. Uh, I will be creating an extensive course on Logic very soon. Uh, first dibs goes to the members of hfmusicacademy.com, 
and then after some time i will be releasing it this is going to be a world-class education guys the, the the clarity that you will experience the the power that you'll be able to gain from this information will be an absolute game changer and of course it'll be condensed so you don't have to watch you know 1000 hours of this material either all right so control option i'm slipping this material so look at what happens when i go all the way to the right right the information is not being updated on my screen it's literally just moving it over and of course could you move this over and then delete stuff yeah you could do that too but look how efficient this is i'm literally just moving it over right if i hit the left arrow key we essentially omit the beginning and we're just listening to the information from here on out let's listen No, uh, nah, you know what? I actually did like that part that came in before. Fantastic. Let's bring it in. I guess we'll come in here. Well, I just want to make sure it plays that properly. That was really interesting because it actually played back when it wasn't supposed to. Um, so let's try that one more time. Yeah, so at that point, you might need to, you know, create, um, that's a bug, clearly, because you're not supposed to be able to hear that information. Let me give you an example. Um, if I bring these two over here, this should, you know, we should hear silence, you know, past this initial transient. Let's see if this is true. Yeah. Although, for whatever reason, it's not muting everything from here take a listen all right workarounds for you is uh you could bounce this to audio let me go ahead and just try that right now uh i am on 10.6 i should throw that out there um, so then now you're not going to have to deal with that and to be clear not 10.6.1 just 10.6 I'm gonna put my master down a little bit more. So um, notice that's what I that's what I'll do from time to time is uh, try workarounds. You can also create automation points. Uh, you know my my hopes here, my my aspiration by the time this is all said and done is that you become so independent with this program that you just feel so confident navigating any problem situation, any mix, any client request, any genre, whatever it is. That's that's what we're doing here. Uh, Eddie Gray reading the user guide and tutorial. Hope you guys are well in good health, obviously. Um, just staying happy, staying in peace, and just putting out the noise. Uh, let's keep cranking. Let's keep learning, increasing our value in the world, and we'll go from there. Um, so very cool. That's, that's kind of just one methodology here. Uh, let me go ahead and command Z all of this since it didn't really um, turn out the way we wanted to. Of course, there was a, a error here, and that's okay. We love logic, and so we just want to see it be the best program that it can be. All right, rotate regions. So there's a difference between slip and there's a difference between rotate. And to be fair, I think I uh, changed the uh, the meaning uh, and descriptions of these earlier. I might have uh, you know said one thing meant the other, but essentially they're related and they do two different things. So this time we're gonna go and uh, hit option command. So rather than control option, we're gonna hear, hit option command, left arrow key, right arrow key. Okay, so the question becomes, does this need to be, um, hold on, does this need to be um, in uh, a folder or not? And by the way, I think I just noticed something. Oh man, this, is, this, this came back to, to get me. Do you guys remember when we, um, we set up those locators? Uh, if you've been watching, you know what I'm talking about. I got really happy and stoked about the left and the right locator and being able to set them up. Well, uh, I changed the key command of rotate. So I need to go back here and clean up a little bit of that mess. Uh, as you can see, I did that here. Um, so I'm gonna change the key command to this and that. Let's see if this works. see 
yeah, it does work. Awesome. Okay. Um, but hold on. There's one more thing. I just want to make sure that I didn't get rid of. Uh, okay. Mm. I might have to change these key commands. It's a little confusing. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to rotate its original key command, which is option command. So let me just do that really quick. I'm going to hit learn key label, option command, right arrow key. We're going to just replace what was, uh, this is by default. I, I was doing this and changing it when we were uh, working together. So, all right. I need you to be able to learn how to do this too, by the way, just quickly moving about. All right. So what's the difference here? So bear in mind, I, my value right now is set to bar. Now look at what happens. Option command right arrow key is literally moving all of the parts to the right or left. So let's start with this information. And again, I really want to drop the volume here. One sec. Okay, listen. I think, uh, you know what? Let's try it and see what it sounds like if we start from here. No, I really want to try here. And maybe now let's actually start here. Okay. And you get nothing is being omitted when we use this option, which is slip. It actually just starts getting rid of material, right? It's a little messing up that there's a bug there with slip. But when I use rotate, now we have a very unique opportunity to move the material in question uh, this way. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Um, let me just do one more thing. Option command, and I want to set the locators. Um, you know what? I'll do that later. All right, cool. Up arrow key, unsolo that. So that right there is the difference between slip and rotate. If you start working it in your arsenal, I know you'll find some applications super creative. All right. Nudge value, we have all of the various values. You can access Logic Pro key commands in the key commands window. Just to be clear, Logic Pro, key commands, edit key command window. If you would like to set up a preset, like let's say you're a Pro Tools user or you live in another country, you can set that up from here. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, let's see here. Nudge regions by a set value. Uh, you've got key commands. If you find yourself working in film or something and, and you want to move by frames, you can do that as well. That's all inside of here. And you would just change the key commands the same way I did. You would select the key command in question, hit learn by key label, and hit the appropriate key command. Uh, you can also hit learn new assignment. And if you have a MIDI controller, um, and then a third option, there's a couple more options, but a third option would be the Logic Remote, which is a very sophisticated free plugin uh, that you can download in the App Store. It's called Logic Remote. All right, let's, uh, let's look a little bit deeper here. Logic User Guide and Tutorial uh, brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com, read by Eddie Gray. You can li limit the movement of regions to either the horizontal or vertical axis by selecting general editing limit dragging to one direction all right guys you got to show you this um as a as a beginner i remember this made the biggest difference in the world so if it made a drastic difference i'm going to bring it up i just let me remember where it is general editing okay cool so let's go general editing it was there all along oh it's somewhere in the bottom all right right here have you ever been moving midi events you're moving them around and it's just, it's hard to get it on the one. It just feels, you know, like a conundrum. It's just, it doesn't feel right. If you enable these, then regardless if you're in the piano roll, regardless if you're in the tracks area or in the score editor, this is going to do this in a very clear way. For example, if I drag this up directly up, I'm click holding and dragging up. This is not going to go diagonal. It's not going anywhere but up. If I move it left, the same applies goes directly left now of course it is adhering to the snap to grid but this is how it works um so let's see here there was another point to be made about that oh yeah 
if we remove this these lovely settings check this out look at look at this mess that this becomes look at this it's like i'm trying to put it here now it's bearable kind of because my snap to grid is set to uh bar but if i go to like you know uh let me go to ticks or something it, it's just it's you can never really tell if you're like on in the right place it's just such a nightmare especially when moving midi around so look at this i'm trying to move this around i think it's yeah that's not going to work for me i need this to be clear I need this to be easy. I need it to be um, um, replicable like every time, right? So um, make sure that you enable limit dragging to one direction, both in the piano roll and in the tracks area. And every single time you move something, whether it be left or right or up or down, it's going to do that quickly and efficiently. All right, so that's a, a great little feature. If you initially move a region left or right, movement is limited. To the horizontal axis, left and right, if you want to move region from one track to another, release the mouse button, and then reselect so it's in key focus, then drag it up or down. So um, it's so worth it, I guarantee you. While this preference is selected, you can overwrite it. Oh, check that out. Okay, that's great. That I didn't know. So if I drag this up, you can see it's just going up. But if I hold shift, now I can move left or right. That's cool. Wait, but it still seems like it's moving. Uh, but maybe it's because my snap is here. Hold on. I want to check this and see if it's right. So up or down. Hold on. All right. Let's try this one more time. Okay, yeah, it's working. Well, hold on. Is it? No, it's not working. No, it's not. You should be able to move this diagonal, which I'm not being, uh, I'm not able to move diagonal for some reason. Yeah, see how I can move this diagonal right now? And um, when the claim was that if you, both of these are locked in, you should be able to move diagonal here, but I'm not. So, you know what that means. Um, all right, so this is not true. While this preference is selected, you can override it by pressing shift when moving regions. Maybe I have to move it and hit shift, um, but yeah, I'm striking it through for now. I will try one last time really quick. Uh, hold it first and then hold shift. All right, hold on. Are they off or on? Mm, wait, I think I actually just did it. Okay, good. Let's check. I click and hold, then hold shift, and uh, not. I mean, it's yeah, it is. It is better, but it's not. It's not quite there. It's not. It has a different feel than if I did this. Yeah. So let me just try this in bar or beat really quick. So those are off. So theoretically, okay, good. And then if I hold shift, nah, I don't see it. Okay. Let's uh let's move on. Can't be doing this all day, so we got to keep moving here. All right, so add or remove gaps in the Logic Pro arrangement. So let's go over a couple ways to expedite the process of arranging a song. These are absolute game changers, especially if you're at the point now where you're actually finishing demos or tracks, and you really you need to take a step back and 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 develop your arrangement skills, which if, like the way I've seen it and the way I've experienced it, a lot of people just kind of skim by this part and they don't really uh, pay it much attention. So let's go. Add or remove gaps in Logic Pro arrangement. Sometimes you may want to remove an entire passage, right, from bar 17 to 20. Alternatively, you may want to insert some empty bars. So we will go through that. All of this is inside the toolbar. You can limit changes to only selected regions. If you do this, rather than moving all the regions within a project section, you are asked if you want to move global events such as bar tempo changes so um this is a very efficient way to drop a verse or add some silence we know that like especially modern music they'll they'll add you know an extra bar you know they'll cut like two seconds out right before the the hook comes in so let's figure out how to, how to do this the toolbar features a number of section editing buttons that can be used to perform some operations. 
Um, when these buttons are used, the operation affects all regions that fall between the locators, regardless of which regions in the area are selected. So just be aware that when we do make these selections, it's all based on the cycle locators. To perform these operations on selected regions within the locators, use the appropriate key commands. On selected regions within the locators, use the appropriate key commands. Okay, so let's keep going. Insert a gap. Um, I will fly through a couple of these. So for example, let's say right before this, uh, this kind of section here. We just wanted one bar of silence. I'm going to create a cycle region, and then I will insert silence inside of the toolbar. There's also a corresponding key command, uh, and you can also control click here and insert silence between global. So this has moved everything, including all the information in the global tracks. Here we go. sense right um let's see just want to make sure i'm giving you all the information cut insert time so you can also cut the information to be clear for selected regions that fall with so regions that began at the left locator position now began at the right locator position so basically it's just going to move everything over but again you can cut the information as though we're literally just right it's out it's, it's not there anymore it'll be erased uh, and clicking the insert silence button in the toolbar also affects all the regions that fall between the locators. You can also insert silence. We just did that. For a combination of partially and wholly selected regions that fall within the, the encompass section is cut. Yeah, so sometimes what happens, it didn't happen here, but like you'll have a region that still, you know, has some space, and then you'll have to non-destructively fix that. Um, so just be aware, like, if you cut off an audio region, um, you can still access it by editing. Uh, actually, here's an, here's an example right here. Do you see how this is stretches over? Well, we're not stuck here, right? I can just delete this, and then we can actually just finish the phrase by accessing the length tool or the resize tool and then creating a proper fade right here at the end. All right, guys, let's keep moving here. Removing gaps. All right, how do we remove gaps? I'm pretty sure we're just going to cut the time, but it looks like they got they got some new stuff that I haven't seen here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do what they what they're asking here. Do one of the following: choose edit, move, shuffle left with insert locators to the first selected region on each track remains unchanged. Choose edit, move, shuffle right with a selection, or use the corresponding key command. Choose edit, move, shuffle right with an, okay, so edit, move. So let's say I want to move everything. Um, and by the way, this is a lot of information that we've gathered from this uh, series that we've been doing. Eddie Gray reading the user guide and tutorial brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. So I'm going to click on this region right here, hit shift F. And now I've selected everything following this specific audio region. In fact, I'm noticing that it's uh, it's selecting everything else. Let me just select this one and hit Shift F. Nice. So you see what's going on here? I don't want to select anything previous to bar 31. This is going to help me out with my cause. And so then now I'm going to go back to, uh, what did they say, edit? Yeah, edit. And then we'll go to move. And shuffle left was what they recommended. Now, I'm curious if this nudges or what's the deal here, but let's go ahead and try it really quick. Option, and I believe that's bracket. Let's try this out. Okay, so it did it by bar, I think. Let's try it one more time. Let's see, option, was it this? Okay, mm, it's doing it by a certain value and I don't know what it is uh, and I don't know how it's determined. Uh, perhaps it's snap, let's change that, option, Okay, I honestly, I can't even tell. I don't know how it's determining that it should move over. Uh, maybe it's the cycle locators. I'll try one last time. 
Okay, it's not quite right because as you can see, this carries over way too, right? This is just supposed to be, um, you know, uh, was a couple bars over. So what I would do personally, I'm just throwing this out there. That's just easy. You guys know that it's good to just have a clean workflow. It doesn't have to be complicated. If it's overly complicated but not efficient, count me out. Option left arrow key, and that's it. I just nudged it over. So I'm not sure the functionality between this shuffle feature. Um, I wonder if it has anything to do with the drag mode shuffle left. But again, still not very much going on by way of explanation here. So it's, it's really hard to tell. All subsequent, subsequent uh, move to the left. So, yeah, I need some more information to really, uh, it feels like it's related to shuffle, but I don't want to give you the wrong information. I'd rather just give you the easy way to accomplish uh, closing the gap between an arrangement. Use nudge, option left arrow key. All right, removing a section. Well, we know we could just cut it. So let's say that for whatever reason the song was going on too long or you have to create an edit for music sync licensing. I'm going to cut out four bars here, control click at the top of the ruler, and I could then cut the section between locators, uh, control command X, and conversely, you can also go up here and cut section. All right, sweet. Let's press play. Of course, that doesn't work, but that's just an idea for you there. So that's pretty great. Um, the regions that spanned. So basically, it's just going to cut everything out, just to be clear. Let's go to tip. We know that these are pretty uh, uh, amazing. The snip command is ideal for situation in which you want to remove an entire section, such as the chorus. The snip. Wow. Okay, let's go uh, uh, snip. I've never heard of snip, and nor is it inside here. So uh, I think it deserves another ding. Snip command? My, my, uh, maybe they mean, nah, there's no way they mean snap. Um, one would span, the other two would be any part of the All right, my good friends, you know what this means. It's getting dinged. Let's, uh, strike through. Here we go. Watch your ears. Yeah, we got to get clear on, on all these things. We can't just throw out a term. It's, it's you know, it's it's challenging. I mean, we're on page 330-something. We've been putting in the time, putting in the reps. We get to this section, we're not actually sure exactly what's going on. So that would be great to get some clarification, some illustrations. Now, you know it would be a great idea if uh, Mr. Edgar Rothermick, check out his YouTube channel, Edgar Rothermick, if he designed the new logic pro manual that would be incredible right if you guys didn't know we uh hf music academy were actually the official proofreaders of his pro tools 2020 book and so if you want to check that out go ahead and visit edgar rother mix gem manuals all right um i'm gonna do a couple more and then we'll call it it's amazing just like sitting here i mean i can imagine it from your side like how you're taking it all in but just sitting here and just like being a part of this just really humbles me guys like i just need you to understand that i'm a student first you know and i just i honor this information and i i really care about it and i just want people to learn and grow all right uh once we have cut something out uh, again, I'll just use the same cut. I understand that it's not musically, you know, pleasing, but I'm going to cut that. Uh, I'll move the locators by just holding, click, holding, and then dragging this over to the right. You can conversely also hit shift, command, uh, uh, period, and then that will move it left or right, depending on its uh, length. And then we control click and... Then we'll follow the rest of these instructions here. Let's see here. We're going to, where are we down here? All right. So we've we've cut the time, and then we set the playhead to the position where you want to insert the section. 
All right, and then we're going to insert time, insert section at playhead. So again, control click, and apparently it has nothing to do with the, the cycle locators, which I thought it did. You control click and you insert section at playhead, and there you go. Oh, there's some uh, there's some verbiage here. Let's read it. You're about to paste the region to multiple tracks. Use the selected and following tracks, even if the track object types do not match. So that's interesting. Paste on tracks with the matching track, even if the track order of the insert, even if this changes the track order, create new tracks for the regions you are about to paste. Well, everything looks fine to me right now, so I'm just going to leave it as okay. Whoa, that that did not do that. Uh, I wonder if I could just hit that key command one more time. Insert section was that Control Command V. Okay, let's try number two, shall we? Uh, this actually may make more sense in all fairness. Boom. Okay. So then why wasn't that on by default, right? It's uh, interesting. Okay. Let's, uh, yep, we just did that. All right, let's go to tip. This workflow is perfect for when you want to insert a part to guarantee all tracks are shifted, including tempo. Make sure everything is selected using command A or Wait, Command I or Shift I before cutting and inserting. Whoa, want to see something? Is this new to me? Whoa, let's go. Okay, all right, Logic, I see you. So you can um, Command A is the equivalent of Shift I. I never knew that. That's pretty sweet. Well, we know Shift I is invert selection. So if you're selecting nothing and you hit Shift I, of course it's going to select everything, right? Uh, invert selection is probably my favorite thing when. Um, creating edits inside the piano roll it's really magic uh check it out shift i and uh, if you forget uh, you can always go in here control click and you always got great options in here so invert selection shift i all right my good friends uh, i'm gonna do one more and then we will call it copy a section so it would be do the same thing except copy uh, let me just see if there's anything new. This workflow is perfect for when you want to insert a part to guarantee all tracks are shifted, including tempo, time signature. Make sure that everything is selected. Roger that. So that's the, literally just a, a replica of that or a copy, no pun intended. Repeat a section of the arrangement using the locators. Okay, cool. So then now uh, we're repeating something. It's similar to Command R, but on a section level. And let's see, we're going to cut insert time repeat section between locators. And there's a key command for that as well, um, which I'll show you in a second here. Control command R from what I believe. Oh, whoa. Not sure what happened to my screen there. Uh, let me just corroborate this repeat. Yeah, control command R. That's what I did. I'll try one more time. Control command R. Okay, that's not working. So it's supposed to repeat that. Uh, I hope you guys are looking at my logic screen. Let me just reshare really quick. Yeah, it looks like we're we're on the same page. Um, so this time we won't use the key command because there's obviously a bug there, but we're just going to repeat section. And there it is right there. All right, but you could see that I was hitting control command R. There's, there's some kind of macro going on or something. You know what I think it is? I'm using a new program. Yeah, that's actually what it is. I just, yeah. I just put two and two together. So then now you can see that it repeated that section, right? That's pretty sweet as well. That's repeating a section. Um, and, and just bear in mind, it's going to move every, like if I, that's actually worth mentioning, if I, you know, repeat this section right here, it's going to move everything uh, to the right. So it's not, uh, from my understanding, let me just actually double check this. So yeah, it's actually just moving everything to the right. Right, it's not replacing anything. It's just repeating. Um, yeah. All right. I think that's good for today. Page three thirty eight. Logic Pro User Guide and Tutorial. I'm gonna hit Command D. Bookmark this, guys. Thank you for another opportunity. I I do not take it lightly. Okay. Even though you know I'm not rehearsing for four hours before I get on. I take a look. I make sure we can navigate this appropriately and that I could give you the very best content again. Uh, but then when it's done, uh, we gotta let go of it, you know? So the most important thing now is, again, you take the notes, watch the rest of the classes, go ahead and sub, go ahead and share the information. Don't just keep it all to yourself. I wanna make sure that we help as many people as possible, okay? I wanted to thank you for being a champion. We love you, we respect you, and of course, we just want you to win. You ready? Signing off.
Eddie Gray brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. Let's go! Let's <laughs> go!